Hey YouTube, today I want to talk to you about creative coding. It's a hobby of mine that's taken me from making simple images like this to very complicated ones like this, using only programming skills that you can teach yourself by reading online. I started back in the early 2000s with the long defunct QBasic. It's a very simple language with the syntax being so simple that it's almost English. It allows you to learn some of the basic concepts of programming while avoiding the more complicated aspects. One of my favorite programs was this one. It draws the output of a simple one-dimensional cellular automation. As I added features, I learned how to use if statements and loops to control the flow of the program. I learned how to use arrays, and I learned how to do basic debugging. By adding beeps to my program to indicate whether it got to a certain stage, I was able to find out what was wrong when the screen wasn't displaying anything. QBasic, however, has many limitations, and I eventually moved on to uh, different programming environments to see what else I could do. The next one I kind of messed around with was processing. Processing is a very general purpose language. It'll allow you to work with text, images, sound, or any other kind of data you might want to use. This, however, can make it a little bit intimidating to new users, as it's hard to know where to get started. The first thing I did with processing was to rewrite my cellular automation program. This allowed me to transfer all the skills I had learned in QBasic over to a more modern and useful language. After playing with processing for a while, I finally settled on a programming language that pretty much any casual user can get started with. It's called Context-Free Design Grammar. Context-Free lets you generate some very complicated and interesting images, like the one shown here, using some very simple rules. This is pretty much one of the most simple programs you could write with Context Free. It starts by setting the background to black and then running the shape foo. The shape foo calls the shape bar and bar draws a circle of the unit size 1. It's not very interesting, but it gives us a place to start. I've added another line to the shape foo. This causes foo to be called again, but moved and scaled by the variables I added at the top of the script. This causes foo to be called over and over, slightly smaller each time, and slightly to the right. You'll notice that I didn't include anything in the context-free program to tell it when to stop. The context-free render engine has a lower limit set in it to the size of a shape that it draws. Once the shapes get below that limit, it stops drawing them, stopping your computer from running out of memory and stopping your program from running forever. In this next demo, I've added the loop 2 and R first rotation in front of the call to foo. This causes foo to be called twice, once the way it was in the last program, and then again rotated by the variable first rotation, which I've set to 120 degrees. This time when I render the shape, you'll see there's quite a bit more complexity, but you can still see that original descending circles shape that was in the demo previous to this. To make this a little easier to look at, I've added another line to the rule bar. This draws a second circle after the first one, but scaled down slightly. This causes all of those circles to look like rings. Finally, I added one more rotation to that call to foo. This one is only 10 degrees, but you'll find that when it renders, it adds a little more curve to the output. So with a very small set of rules, I was able to generate this very complex and interesting pattern, which was the base of the image I showed you at the beginning of this video. Using very simple rules, like the ones you see me put together today, it's possible to make many very different and very interesting patterns and images using context free. However, after producing images like these, the next thing I want to do was add animation. Context-free has built-in animation features that allow you to make animations like these. But what I wanted was to make animations that look more like this, which is what I'm going to cover in my next video. I hope you found this interesting, and if you'd like to try out Context-free, go to contextfreeart.org or look for the link in the section below. Thanks for watching.